Making my fish fry. I am live now. Oh, I gotta turn my own phone down. Hold on. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna make some fries. I already have some water boiling. Let me cut forth. I'm gonna make a decent amount because Sarah's definitely gonna eat some of these. Okay, so you want about fry? I'm sorry, what? Are you doing anything other than fish and fries? Nope. <clears throat> uh, so, just cut them into fries. You know how fries look. Just about like that. Perfect. So we're gonna make a bunch of those. This is how you make french fries. Uh, you can cut them, cut them smaller if you want. We're gonna have some, some large boys, some small ones. Just to fuck with the, you know, get some differences in there. So, in your pot of water, um, you want to salt it like you're doing pasta. And then you want to add 15 milliliters of white vinegar per liter of water. That should be good. These aren't very uniform. Here, let's get the... There you go. Intentional uniform. They'll obviously cook even and quick if you have them all roughly the same size. Easy stuff. Anyway, this is how you make fries from scratch <laughs> and not out of a bag. So, take these over on my bench scraper. Uh, we're just gonna put them into the water. Break them up a little bit once we get them in there. Uh, these will boil for about 10 minutes and then they're gonna cool. Make sure they're all broken up. Oops, it's fine. Okay, so about 10 minutes from now, we'll look at that. Uh, in the meantime, we're gonna make, I already have some fish fillets dredged in flour. They're salted and then dredged in flour and they're just sitting here. <clears throat> um, I guess we should turn the fryer on. What we're gonna need first is this to heat up. So I didn't even heat it up yet. That's how quick this is. 350-ish. Actually, we're gonna go higher. We're gonna go all the way up. Um, we have to make the, the sort of the wet batter. It's kind of a batter. Wet for the fish into the dry. We're gonna make a combo of those things. So uh, you're just gonna need for three pieces like this, about an egg, maybe less. But you can't do less than an egg, cash. Uh, yellow mustard. About that much. We're gonna do some milk. You don't have to. I'm just gonna thin it out a little bit. Um, and I'm doing this because I'm going to do a different step in a second. And then we're gonna add hot sauce. Usually this is buffalo sauce, but Cholula plus Tabasco equals hot buffalo sauce. Try it. One, two, three-ish, sure. One, two, three-ish. Sure, maybe four. Doesn't matter. It'll taste fine. <coughs> then we're gonna whisk it together. That's real wet right now, which is fine. That's how you fucking stir something, okay? Uh, I'm gonna put this stuff away. You can look at my fridge again. Look into my refrigerator. Look at all the bounteous things. This is a acorn squash carrot puree. It's delicious. With garlic. And it looks kind of shitty now, but it's delicious. Uh, these are doing stuff. Might have to go past 10 minutes. Let me start the timer after it starts to boil a little bit. Because we're going to want them. I'll show you. We're gonna want them not cooked all the way through, but cooked-ish. Okay, so this is my flour dredge. Again, there's only three pieces of fish. I don't need a lot of flour. So just scale this up if you have more. So about three pieces of fish worth. This is probably more than that. Uh, cornmeal. About the same amount. That's probably fine. I don't really look at it that hard. 
Uh, I'm gonna put lemon pepper in here. Oh, man, I'm gonna put the whole bottle of lemon pepper in here. Sure. Um, <clears throat> garlic, salt. Sure. Paprika for some smoke. A little smokiness. Not a lot. Color. I also have some buffalo stuff I got from Buffalo Wild Wings. I'm just going to put it in there because we don't use it for anything. And we'll get some buffalo-ness. Sure. Um, we're not done though. Two tricks. First trick is cornstarch. Uh, if you've ever been to a Chinese restaurant, this is how they get stuff so damn crispy. So there's some cornstarch. Okay, this is also going to inhibit gluten formation while we make uh, our dredge, because we're going to add some wet to it, so don't worry about it. Uh, and then just a little bit of baking soda. What's going to happen here? About that much. Doesn't need to be a lot. Um, that's going to hit this. It doesn't matter if this is wet. Mix it up. boiling doesn't matter if this is wet because part of this is going in there in fact I need a little bit more wet We're gonna get more milk a little bit more because this is gonna thicken up a little bit because we're gonna share between crowds here all right I'm not crazy I'm not crazy this is going to create craggles. See the craggles? Same thing. We're going to take some of this, put it in here. Take a little bit more. It's going to help it adhere both ways. And also, when that baking soda touches water and stuff, uh, you're going to get little bubbles. And those bubbles are going to fry up in the fryer and create delicious texture. It's going to be great. Um, I don't really need this. <clears throat> These are happy. They're doing well. Let's try eight-ish minutes now. Uh, okay, so we, we want these to hang out in their dredge for a little bit. We're going to crowd the area. We're going to use this all at the same time. Uh, this comes together really quick. So, I'm gonna put gloves on because I don't wanna wash my hands. But you don't have to. <clears throat> we're gonna do wet hand, dry hand, but we're actually gonna do it, you ready? You ready? Wet hand's my left hand. Wet hand. See how it sticks? You want it to get into that little flap too. Okay, and then right into it, shake it around, look at those craggles, you can see the texture already, that's what I'm talking about, so we're just going to put it here, and we're going to let that hydrate for a while, we want that to sit to the side while we finish the fries, and it can sit for a little bit, it won't matter, okay, make sure we get in between those little flappy boys, there we go. Craggly things happening. You can push it in a little bit so it adheres. You don't want any blinds or blind spots, blank spots. Okay, you can do this for chicken as well. See the craggles? We're craggling. This is how you do it. So this simulates, um, like when you go to a, a, a restaurant that sells, you know, whether it's fish, or chicken or whatever, <clears throat> think KFC, you know, the craggly bits on the outside. This simulates dipping a bunch of chicken or fish or whatever, dipping them and then putting them in the dry over and over. That's what creates craggles. It's a natural process that happens like in the restaurants. You can call them whatever you want, I call them craggles. Uh, <laughs> it's a natural process that happens over time as you just do this process million times. You don't have to do this if you're doing like, you know, a fish fry for a whole fucking family. Or or like guests or whatever. There you go, these look perfect. 
and they're just gonna sit there. That's it. Okay, we're essentially done with this shit. Uh, to the point where I'm gonna move this stuff. We're gonna do this. I'm just gonna move it out of the way. Put it down here. Get to you guys later. I'm gonna do dishes on stream. Um, <clears throat> so now we're almost done. <laughs> the number one thing we're gonna wait on uh, are these fries. Since we have five minutes left, we're gonna pull one out, so pull a big one out, just to see where we're at. Oh yeah. We're getting there. It's not really boiling like I'd like. Let me test one more. I don't want to get too mushy. Let me hold this with my apron. See how we got bounce? We're gonna let these go a little bit longer, not super long, not even five minutes. <clears throat> Just a little bit. And right now I'm gonna look at you guys. I demand a dish stream. You won't get it. You won't get it from me. Jake with the electric stove. Woke. Well, I don't have gas, so. That's what happened. Anyway, those look amazing. You can see that they look amazing. You're gonna you're gonna think these are delicious. Uh, I also made a tartar sauce. You know what? We're gonna have to. Here's what we're gonna do. Bonus. You're getting guacamole today. You're getting bonus guac. I think. Yeah. I mean, I might as well go get a lime and a bowl. A lime and a bowl. Lime. We don't have any cilantro, do we? I don't have any cilantro, whatever. And a bowl. Uh, I'll just use that red onion. It's fine, I already have knives. All right, these fries are done. Bonus guac for no reason, except that I need to make stuff and these need to cool. So, you don't need this water anymore. These are good to go. Don't break them if you can help it. Take them out. And we're just gonna just gonna set them so they can cool. There you go. Sorry, I gotta burn your fingers! Okay, so this stage uh, does a couple things. Uh, chemically, that I don't quite remember right. Something about the pectin on the outside of it, something about the starch breakdown. Um, the vinegar on the outside tightens up the membrane of the like it creates a membrane rather, on the outside of the flesh of the french fry. And so, what you'll see is, let me see if I can just grab one. I showed you a little bit earlier, let me get this big one. You see how it goes like, in wiggles? This only happens because of the vinegar. 30 or 15 milliliters per liter of water. Uh, and that helps, that helps everything get real happy at the next stage of frying. We're gonna spread these out a little bit. We don't want to touch the fish, but it doesn't really matter. We're frying everything. Uh, it's all gonna come back up to temp, and this was all clean before, so it doesn't really matter. It matters in a restaurant. It doesn't matter when you're cooking at home. Uh, this would be uh, of health code violation in a restaurant, but only because of the potential for cross-contamination. Um, so, yeah, you have a house, it's fine. <clears throat> um, so, while those are cooling, this is heating up. We're just gonna make guac really quick. <laughs> it's not related, this is bonus. Here's how to make guac. Uh, you could also do this in a uh, more and pestle, mocajete. Um, doesn't really matter. I just need salt, lime, and something I can zest with. Sure, this really shitty, this really shitty one. That's fine. Avo, I'm sure you know how to cut an avocado. Turn. Cash. <laughs> uh, spoon. Take a spoon. Scoop it out. You can cut an avocado, guys. Uh, you can also do other stuff to your... <laughs> you do other stuff to your guacamole. Uh, but you also don't have to. Delicious! So these don't have to come to like room temperature, but they do have to cool a while. Don't let them, don't let them be steaming before you put them in there. 
Uh, and then we're gonna do the first fry on the fries. We're gonna do the first and only fry on the fish. And then we're gonna do the last fry on the fries and then we'll be done. <coughs> okay. I don't miss, dude. Uh, okay. At this stage, I prefer a fork. And some salt. Sure. Um, just gonna cut an onion. Just do half. Right down the middle, or just a skew. There we go. Uh, you want the root end, doesn't matter which size, or side I'd rather. And uh, cut the little tip off. This is how we're gonna break down onions kind of forever, cash. Uh, take the outside off, obviously. And when you keep the root end, the root end, uh, look what happens, you have like a little area to hold on to. Hello, please. Usually I tear off like the whole outside just cause it's like, who's using that? Maybe I still could. Let's just do it. Just tear out the yellow outside. Doesn't matter, fuck it. Think we make it again? Now we're gonna dunk this one. We're dunking that one. Lay up? Sure. Okay. So we just want to dice on this. I'll let you see. Uh, normally I would hold it like this and do that, but I'll show you. You kind of just want to equidistant. Not all the way through. You don't want to hold it like this either, but I just want you to see how far we're going. It's about that far. Uh, I'm going to make another cut right on top here. Just because that piece is robust. Okay. Then you go, you can see the lines just naturally on it. You can just go with them. Oops, cut all the way back. Come on. Doesn't have to be perfect. This has to be edible. There we go. I fucked that up. That's okay. Here, watch. It's just guac. You don't want them huge. There you go. Now you have perfectly diced onions, roughly the same size all over, and we're gonna go like this. There we go. That's probably enough onions. I won't. Hmm. Let's do a little bit more. Uh, I don't really need more onions. I'm just gonna toss them. I would normally save that, but I got too many. Uh, okay. <clears throat> There's that. This is almost squawk. And we're almost ready to do the other stuff. Um, well, <clears throat> we will zest it first. Do not underestimate zesting a lime. Mm, if you could smell it, you should zest. If thing calls for zest and you just add juice because you're lazy, you don't do it at all. You're dumb and you're missing the point. Zest is ideal. I want the zest of a whole lime for a big, uh, or at least half a lime, for a big boy like this. This is not the thing to use. I'm getting a little bit more pith than I want, but that's okay. I'd use the microplane, but it's, it's in the uh, dishwasher. Sure, these are a little bit longer. So, you're gonna get a bunch of aromatics from the lime, do this, and we're gonna test for uh, flavor at the end, just the juice of like half-ish of a lime at first. We also could do some black pepper if we wanted. Maybe I will. I don't wanna get my juicer out, I'm just gonna use a fork. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect or anything. There we go. And then just smash the shit out of it, dude. Smash, 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 bonus guac. Just because I have that here. This is not the vessel for this. I need a little bit higher, higher rim, but that's okay. Anyway, that's just about it. Um, I like a simple guac. You can do more stuff if you want. I would normally put cilantro in here. I don't have any. Uh, some people don't like it, though. And now, if you're worried about your guac going bad, um, more lime is just gonna keep it from going brown. It won't necessarily keep it from 
spoiling. Uh, your flavor will change still. Let's taste it. Yeah, it's lit. Mm. Yeah, it's like perfect. Uh, you don't have to do anything else. Cash. Okay. So that's a guac for no reason. Tip. I needed to make it. Okay. These are comfortable to touch. Wiggle them. They're fine to go. Throw this over here. Okay. This is my deep fryer. It's really nice. I'm going to move my phone somewhere. Put you over here. Um, we're just going to take fries and put them on there. Uh, don't worry about it if you hear some sizzle on this. Uh, your deep fryer might be a little different. So this first one, we're doing essentially a blanche, kind of. Fish is still sitting there, totally fine. We're gonna do two batches of this, roughly. I just don't want them like really touching a ton. I want them to have space in there. That's plenty. We'll do the second batch after. I'll move them up. Uh, <clears throat> so, this is about 50 seconds long. We're gonna start a timer. Go 51 seconds, press start, put them down. Okay. Oh, that's 50 minutes. We're just gonna look at this. Anyway. So this is a first blanch. What this is gonna do is uh, they're gonna cook through a little bit more, obviously. Um, the outsides are gonna get crispy. It's gonna release some moisture, and then we're gonna set them down. And at this stage is when you can freeze them. I'll show you. Take about 50 seconds, not long at all. This is easy stuff. It just takes a little bit of labor and time, but it's really not hard work. Just wanna make sure that they're not sticking. In about 10 more seconds, I'm going to blow my nose ASMR. Much better. Get some lime juice off me. Okay, just about done. And that's, and that's blanching. You can see that they blistered up a little bit on the outside. They're getting delicious. They already look like... Things you could, uh, if you fried them longer, you could eat them longer. But uh, what you want them to do is get down in temp before we fry them again. Uh, it also smells like french fries in here now. Now we have french fry smell. Touch these a little bit, move them around, they're not that bad. We just want them to sort of have space to cool. Uh, sure, that's fine. Uh, and now we just load up the next batch. These are nice and like they hold up well because of the vinegar in there. When we boiled them, well, like back up to temp, <clears throat> they hold up well. It's so not gonna fall apart on you. Turn this timer off. Um, I wish I had something to eat my guac with besides a fork. Mmm, 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 mmm. That's so fucking good. Um, yeah, you should make it like that forever. Um, I guess the really, really traditional way is, like I said, in a mortar and pestle or mocajete. Mocajete is like a mortar and pestle, but it's like bigger and wider from Mexico. Actually, it's more like Mayan, right? <laughs> so anyway, uh, this is how you cook french fries. It's simple. Just gotta let this get back up to temp. You'll probably put them in anyway, it'd be fine, but we'll just do it right. We'll do it right. I guess I'll grab you guys for a sec. Wish I could have guac. You can! You can make it yourself. Avocados are like 80 cents. Onions are even cheaper. And a lime is even cheaper than all that. This whole thing costs like under two bucks. All right, we're just gonna put them in. It's not down that much. Can I not put 50 seconds? Just 50 minutes, huh? Let's just do one minute then. Break them up a little bit. Easy. And they'll be delicious. Now normally, if you're gonna do this, you'd let them come all the way down to room temperature. If you wanted, but we're just gonna cook the fish and then cook fries, you'll see. We don't have to wait that long. Uh, this is almost done. Uh, by the way, I also made a tartar sauce. 
Mm. Uh, it is mayo, pickles, dill, parsley, uh, the zest of a, like part of a lemon. You see I zested this lemon a little bit. And then I cut out a wedge from it and added a little bit of the juice. Not a ton. And that's tartar sauce. Mmm. It's even better second day, bro. A little lemony. It's a little bright, but still adds fat to the situation, which is good. All right, and these are done. Yeah, see, the temperature is fine on these. In fact, these are 10 seconds longer uh, than these other ones. You can see the color difference. It's fine, though. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't, it's not, it doesn't have to be perfect in every way because they will, you won't even notice it in the end product. Unless you really overcooked them the first time, then you would. Just a little space. There we go. Okay, we're gonna let this get up to temp. Then we're gonna drop these delicious looking fish in there and we're gonna plate up. Uh, so I guess for garnish, let's go with our lemon wedge. Just do, just do a little wedge, a little wedger, dude. Wedge O Lemon over here. Still got delicious guac trapped in the spoon. Here we go. Get ready. Take a little bit of this. Looking good. Uh, we'll plate this on the sides after the fact. Delicious. Pickles get such a better app. If you don't like pickles, you could put capers in there instead. That's pretty traditional. Uh, I have some capers, I didn't do it though. Okay, it's ready. So we're gonna take this fish. Place it in here. Nice and easy. Everyone has space. And we're gonna fry these boys. Uh, should take about three, four minutes, something like that. We're gonna flip them once too. That's why I have these tongs. Uh, this is really easy stuff. I don't know why Dave keeps making me deep fry though. Anyway, this is all better than his. <laughs> That's why we're doing it. Um, I do have an acorn squash taco video that I'm going to put out soon. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, let's see more guac. Mm. Bro. I mean, come on. Look at it. Look at it, dude. You see it. Oops, I turned my, turned my phone off for a sec. It'll take a super long time. Let's flip them. These are very thin pieces of fish. They don't need to be cooked too much. You can overcook them, but I mean, in this situation, you just want them cooked through. Not that big a deal. I mean, these are comfortable to touch. We can, we can put these in the next batch. So I'm gonna make a batch for the plate, and then I'll make this batch for Sarah. <clears throat> but yeah, this is this is fish. This is fish. You can eat it <laughs> with your mouth. We'll give a, a a texture test and everything. It'll be delightful. Like it's essentially done now. Let's look at it. I mean, come on, we'll do, let's do one more flip. And we'll pull them out slowly. You can hear it, dude. Let's give it one more minute. Probably don't even need that much. There we go. Just a 602 of them. Okay. I mean, look at how fucking delicious that looks. You'd eat that. Let's do this first. Oh, it smells great. Uh, first thing you want to do when they come out, hit them with a, just a touch of salt, not a ton. Touch of salt. Lemon pepper. If you had buffalo sauce, you could catfish and buffalo sauce, or, you know, some other thing. Anyway. 
Obviously those look delicious. Okay, then we're gonna do our fries. Uh, start loading them in. Oops. Okay. Looks like they're ready. Uh, these will go for a little bit of time as well. <clears throat> so as you can see, we're crushing this shit. Uh, while these sit here, you know, they're going to get a little bit hotter. We're going to cook through a little bit more. Um, let's put... Let's put tartar sauce right here. Just like that. This plate. Play like a champ. There we go. This is how you cook fish and chips. It's really easy. I don't know why he made me do this. <laughs> you can make, because I have this guac now, I can take a tortilla, put it all together, Baja fish taco. You can do a, just for regular fish and sort of, I guess fish, sort of fish and chips, we didn't batter them. Oh man, I wanna eat it. I wanna eat it. I'm gonna eat one. I'm gonna eat a piece. I'm gonna eat a piece, listen. Mmm. Makes you dance, bro. Mmm. That's better than yesterday. Okay. Mmm. Yeah, I nailed this one. Still good to go. Fish and chippies are almost done, boy. Almost done, boy. Let's get those crumbles out of there. Play like a champ, huh? Now we gotta hide this one, though. Gotta get the money shot. All right, these are about done. If you cool them off even more, let me let those keep going for a second. Um, if you let them cool all the way down, it gets even better. Uh, you can see the blisters and stuff on this on the outside here. They're really good. This is definitely the way to do it. This is so good. Okay. Now also remember when you're frying, you want your salt at the end. You don't wanna, you wanna fuck that up. Okay. Yeah. These are perfect. Push these this way. Dump these out here. Gripper of salt. You do this in a bowl too. I'm gonna also do a little bit, a hit of salt when I put them down. Uh oh, put one in there. Anyway. This is fish and chips, bro. Fishies, chippies. Look at it go. Can we get a HD, HD headshot? Oh, let's see if we can get a little bit better. A little bit more, a little bit more. Even more, even more, I'm squatting. Even more. Let's eat it. Okay, a little bit of lemon. Just over the top. You put it on the fries too if you want. They need acid, I think. Let me grab one. Let me show you the cross section. Hmm? Perfect, right? Delish. Anyway, you can make this really easy. It takes no time at all. Uh, mm. A little bit of prep, I guess. Do it together. Perfect. That's a fish fry.